culture can be changed. And the third point I'd like to tell you about is that um, about change is easy. It's happening. And you can make a difference. Take command. Um, there's a movement in science called Nurturing Scientists. This generation is very special, as you notice, in the world. And one of the things is to make, improve different aspects of the world. And in a small way, this is a, an arena that we can act in. Maybe positively impact other arenas that need to be uh, acted upon, because science is such a flagship of Western culture. And these ideas of rationality and objectivity are extremely powerful in our, uh, in our society. And I think uh, making a change inside science can impact the world in, in, in many ways. Here's how, what you do, what we do. So I give these talks with the guitar. And every place I give a talk in the guitar, it ends up that one of the scientists gets up and organizes a group of new scientists, usually people who've just started, because that's a place where, as I said, you're full of fear and you're open. Invite a workshop that uh, for two days you can learn this language, and a language to talk about interpersonal relationship, interpersonal communication, and afterwards build a nurturing group, which is a support group that meets once every week or two weeks. So the first time this happened was in Israel, the Weizmann Institute, 17 <coughs> UPIs, many of them were skeptical. You know, what, what would talking about emotions help us in our you know, getting tenure, etc.? But they still went, and they, after the workshop, they were convinced this was the most important two days they've spent so far. They met the next week to talk, what have we used this week? And instead of 17 stories, they only got to hear one. Something like, I have a very talented student, but they're just not motivated, something like that. And everyone had stories, and so it was so rich. And they've been meeting now for a year. This week, they've done the, uh, what they invited a refresher workshop and made a workshop for the new generation new generation of young guys. This group, when you meet them, is empowered. They're leaders. They're not uh, frightened or defensive or everything is fine, new faculty. They're a union, <laughs> taking care of graduate students and of themselves, and, and exploring what it means to, uh, what, what they want uh, science to be like. So the, the, I think what you can envision is that change will take maybe 15 years, 20 years, when these people are determining the systems science, uh, they will have a, a place, so much discussion, they will know how to change the systems to better reflect our needs. Like I said before about, about the refereeing song, refereeing is a great process, but a lot of the dark sides of it, scientists do to ourselves, and we feel isolated, we complain about it. Uh, uh, we complain about the most original grants don't get funded, or the promotion system, or things like that. But scientists who get to set the, the rules. The thing is that we're isolated from each other because we have no place to discuss the culture of science, and so, the first step is to build this language and discussion in order to change systems in science. Um, so we have now groups at Harvard Medical School and MIT, Stanford, in Israel, several universities in Barcelona. Um, a paper about choosing a scientific problem. Um, I wrote in molecular cell. And in 2009, this essay about the cloud was recently shown to be the most read paper across all sciences in 2009. The next one is a paper about chromatin structure. So there's a tremendous thirst for this topic. You can see how the need is like uh, so clear, but it just needs a little bit of organization. And department heads and departments are signing on to it because they realize it's coming from Young faculty from postdocs also, groups of postdocs are forming. Tremendously exciting and liberating in a certain way. I always get one question before I end with these talks. <coughs> Bye, Melissa. <laughs> which is, um, I see uh, groups which are very successful scientists but have very hurtful relationships inside their lab. Right? And one thing I, a I answer is, imagine if these people nurtured their lab members. What kind of science they could reach? 
And eventually you have to choose what kind of lab you want to run. So the last, before we finish, it's a song called Sunday at the Lab. I kiss my wife and kids farewell. I must go down to run my gel. I'm gonna spend another Sunday at the lab. My wife said, Uri, you got a promise. You love me more than doing science. I said, um, honey, could we discuss this another day? I must go away and resuspend my cells down at the lab. My mom said, son, don't waste your life. Go home and spend time with your wife. You must have learned this from your father. Why can't you be more like your brother? No son of mine spends Sundays at the lab. My dad said, son, you need a shrink. The shrink said, son, you need a drink. Those Rorschach spots reminded me of blots. He said, oh God, you obviously have an obsessive compulsion to spend all your Sundays at the lab. My wife, she left me. My mom disowned me. The shrink pretends he doesn't know me. Cause I can't be myself without some buffer on the shelf. So if you need me, you can phone me at the lab. I'm gonna spend another Sunday. I'm gonna spend another Sunday. I'm gonna spend another Sunday at the It's a great pleasure to come to the lab in the morning and to leave before the sun goes down. Thank you very much.